This video is intended for training purposes. Healthcare facilities should develop procedures based on available equipment and staff. It is imperative that all protocols be tested and practiced while wearing personal protective equipment to ensure applicability and team readiness. Endotracheal intubation. Considerations for intubating a patient with Ebola or other special pathogen. In this video, we identify the special considerations needed when performing an endotracheal intubation on a patient infected with Ebola or other special pathogen in a special pathogen isolation area. When intubating a patient in a special pathogen isolation area, healthcare workers will be donned in personal protective equipment according to CDC guidelines and institutional protocol. As intubation is an aerosol generating procedure, healthcare workers are required to wear an enhanced airway protection system such as the Powered Air Purifying Respirator or PAPR. In a limited resource situation where PAPRs may not be available, an N95 respirator may be used if approved by the institution and worn appropriately by a fit tested healthcare worker. Consider early, semi-elective intubation of patients with respiratory compromise in order to avoid emergency intubation, as response times in an isolation setting may be higher due to PPE donning. Additionally, rushing through the intubation procedure could lead to errors. If possible, bag mask ventilation should be avoided to help decrease the risk of aerosolizing saliva and other secretions, gastric insufflation, and emesis. If bag mask ventilation cannot be avoided, consider using an oral airway and a heat moisture exchange filter to reduce potential aerosolized secretions. Consider the use of rapid sequence induction, including neuromuscular blockade with succinylcholine or high dose rocuronium, followed by video laryngoscopy to reduce the likelihood of aerosol generation through coughing or vomiting. The additional use of video laryngoscopy will allow the operator to position themselves away from the patient, keeping their head further away from potential aerosolizations. BiPAP and nasal high flow oxygen are not recommended due to the potential for increased aerosol generation. Throughout the intubation procedure, healthcare workers will be wearing PPE that may be uncomfortable and restrictive. This will result in decreased dexterity, decreased tactile sensation, and distorted vision. For this reason, healthcare workers are urged to work cautiously and be mindful of their limitations. Prior intubation training while wearing PPE is essential. This will allow healthcare workers to experience firsthand the challenges they will encounter during a live procedure. Communication with team members is an example of one such challenge. PBE can often be noisy and muffle sounds, making communication difficult. Healthcare workers will need to speak in a loud, clear tone and be prepared to ask coworkers to repeat themselves to verify understanding. Closed loop communication should be utilized throughout the procedure. Necessary equipment for the intubation procedure includes a video laryngoscope. If a video laryngoscope is not available, a traditional laryngoscope will suffice. A ventilator. A suction canister and suction device. An appropriate waste disposal container. An approved sharps container. And an airway cart complete with supplies and medications. The airway cart will need to be examined by an airway expert prior to the procedure to ensure all necessary equipment and supplies are present. Consider the decontamination strategy when assembling the airway cart. A disposable container may be used to take supplies into the patient room so that the airway cart can remain outside. Ensure staff outside of the patient care room are familiar with the contents of the airway cart and are prepared to pass items into the patient room as necessary. Ensure that additional supplies and medications are readily available in case they are needed during the procedure.
For safety reasons, it is recommended that an intubation procedure in a special pathogen isolation area require a minimum of three care team members, one to perform the procedure, one to assist at the bedside, and a third to monitor the patient. To prepare the patient care room for the intubation procedure, clear the work area of all unnecessary items and ensure a safe working environment. Position the bed at a safe and comfortable height for the provider performing the intubation procedure. Remove the headboard. Prepare the video laryngoscope for use and position it directly in the provider's field of view. Prepare the airway supplies and medications at the bedside. Set up suction with extended tubing and a tonsil tip suction device. Prepare the ventilator for use. This may include the use of a heat moisture exchange filter between the ET tube and circuit to reduce any aerosolized secretions. If using an active humidifier, a heat moisture exchange filter can also be used on the inspiratory outlet on the expiratory side of the ventilator. As with any procedure, ensure institutional protocols are followed at all times. For example, the provider should conduct a timeout with all care team members prior to the procedure to validate the approach and process, ensure all required equipment and supplies are prepared, and discuss medication administration and plans for hemodynamic support. Before beginning the endotracheal intubation, pre-medicate the patient as needed and perform hand hygiene. Ensure there is an observer present inside or outside of the patient room to monitor the procedure for any break in infection control protocols. Perform the intubation procedure per institutional protocol. When using the video laryngoscope, ensure the monitor is positioned directly within the provider's line of sight at a comfortable height for viewing. Using the video laryngoscope will help reduce the risk of aerosolization exposure from patient exhalation or other bodily fluids. This reduction in the risk of aerosolization is accomplished through the body positioning of the intubation provider. Using a video laryngoscope, as opposed to a traditional laryngoscope, allows the provider to position their body further away from the patient, increasing the distance between the provider and the patient's airway. Confirm ET tube placement with chest rise, quantitative or qualitative capnography, and conventional chest x-ray if available. Ultrasound may be used if providers with training and experience in this technique are available. Following the procedure, perform hand hygiene. Ensure all sharps are accounted for and safely disposed of. Some items used during the procedure, such as blunt needles and intubation stylets, may be considered sharps in a special pathogen isolation area and should be disposed of following institutional protocol. Be mindful not to pinch or compromise PPE when manipulating the hinge on an adjustable laryngoscope. Place all instruments in a location where they will not contaminate other equipment or surfaces. Reusable instruments will need to be decontaminated if being sent to sterile processing. Clean and disinfect the area. Remove and dispose of waste per institutional protocol. Additional resources are available at the NETEC and CDC websites. If you have any questions, please contact NETEC directly at info at Thank you.